Well, folks, it's fair time across the United States, and y'all are in for a special treat. We got an old classic dish for you, Indian fry bread, Indian taco, and you ain't even got to wait in line. Stick around. It is worth seeing. <music> Welcome to Kemp. My name is Kent Rollins and we do a lot of cowboy cooking here and today you're in for a special treat because a lot of the places across the United States, what is it in the fall? It is fair time. Ride the Ferris wheel, stand in line, get hot. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking go to the food stands. That's where it's happening. And what are we looking for? That most traditional treat that me and Shan love because we just got back from the Elko County Fair and it was Indian fry bread, Indian tacos. We eat till we made ourselves sick. So folks, we are fixing to recreate this. First, I'm gonna give you a little history on this recipe. Now, a long time back in the 1800s, the mid 1800s, the Navajo tribe was forced off their land and had to go to a reservation. Long 300 mile walk. But when they got there, the government passed them out flour and lard and salt. What you gonna make with it? They gonna make like a flatbread, fry bread, and then it took on some modern twist here, there, and yonder, and people have changed it and added things. We are talking about four cups of all-purpose flour, a teaspoon. Hang on, let me just get, I want them to see like how much it's raining. <laughs> a teaspoon of salt, and Shan will guarantee I am on the money all the time. Two tablespoons of baking powder. Now, folks, this has no yeast in it, and a lot of recipes call for very little baking powder. But you know the cowboy. Three tablespoons of oil. What are we using today? Canola oil. Now you can use whatever you got on tap, but that's what's happening today. And thank you, Jesus, for them raindrops. Sweet drops of rest. Now, I have me here some warm water. But I like to take that oil while it's there and just sort of spread it around evenly and make sure everybody gonna get some of it. Then we're gonna add a cup and a half to two cups of water, warm water. Starting with a cup and a half, but we will probably have to add some more. That cup and a half of water are gonna have to have a little more to go with it, cause we're looking for a pretty sticky dough-like consistency. So we're gonna be pretty close to a cup and three-fourths of water. So we get it to this point, you know what's next, don't you? a little flour that ain't been rained on, drizzle you some, throw her some in the air like that, and then let's go to making it into a ball. Now it is pretty sticky, but that's sort of what we're after at this point. I wanna knead it around there a little. Voila, the end result, Shan, is sticky fingers. That's what it's all about. Now, you're looking for a, a pretty soft dough here, a little tacky. We're gonna let it sit right there. I'm just gonna tell you, if Shan is showing y'all this, it's a good way to get flour off your hands. Don't do it in the house though, cause it sort of gets in the floor and then you track it around on your boots. We got it to that point, folks. What happens? We gotta cover it and we'll set it in a warm place. Now sure, it's not got the yeast in it that's gonna make it rise and bubble up and jump around, but it is gonna increase in size just a little due to the baking powder. But let it set two hours. Now, wait, now you gotta just do the magic TV hands now. Oh, magical TV. Oh, it's been two hours. Look what appeared, folks, from the magic. Two hours worth of dough, and you can see how it changed there a little. It even changed the color of the bowl due to the magic. Well, folks, Mother Nature said, hey, why don't you get here under the fly? And a lot of you folks have heard me say that word, fly. That's what we refer to the top of the tarp of the wagon there that covers all of us. Their producer was getting wet and she is sweet and she will melt. We're gonna flour this little board right quick. Some melted butter. Ooh wee. I like to pour it all over. We have four tablespoons of melted butter and we're gonna set and knead it here just a minute. And Shen can show you how shiny it's getting. And it's a little what I would say tough. And that's what we're after. Looky there. That is, see that glisten, that butter give it all? We got her to that point, got our surface flared. You wanna get just a little bigger than a golf ball. And I like to sort of roll them around here a little. It's gonna make about a dozen. 
This in here got cheated a little, so we're going to give him a little more. Now, if it was really according to the beagle, I'd just roll the whole thing up next, and that'd be his. But we got him on a diet, folks, because y'all been telling me that the beagle is overweight. But he is just right. Well, and then I just want to go to mashing, sort of keeping him in a round shape. Turn him over, give him some more mashing. So we're going to do this. It's called rolling pin action. And then we're going to roll them pretty flat, pretty thin. Try to keep them somewhat round. Make sure you got them flyered well on both sides before you get that rolling pin after them or they'll go to sticking and trying to roll up worse than anything in the world. And you'll have to turn them over when you go to rolling because they'll try to stick and you can get them a little more if you're rolling from all sides. We got that fine egg skillet up here. Got us about an inch of oil in there. And today I'm using canola oil. Usually something that's got a good fry temp. I like to start about 325 degrees because you're going to increase as you're cooking a little. But I don't want just a flash fry because some of that will be too doughy in the middle. I want to fry it a little slower than that. That's why I start out with a little less heat. Oil's ready to go. Let me get this first participant here. Give them a little shaking to get that loose flour off of them. It'll help the grease stay a lot better for a little longer. You may have to get you a fork and poke some of them holes, but we're going to let them fry really well till they get golden brown on both sides. Now, folks, you go to getting some really big bubbles, you might want to poke them with a fork, but it's beginning to brown as Shin can zoom in there and you can see that. So let's just take a little peek. That right there is what you call mm -mm goodness. Let's lift her up here, let her drain. Look at that good golden color. Oh my gosh, just drain that grease off of it. Just let her sit there and do the drippy drop for a minute. Then we're going to take it right over here, lay it on that paper towel. This one's the Beagles. He said shake the flyer off his too. Have your fork handy because this is when they like to try that. I'm going to bubble up and jump up. put on them little Indian fry bread tacos. I love me some beans. Now we have done beans two ways in some videos and channel have a description of the cowboy pinto beans and our refried beans. We're going to link this above and below so you don't get lost but my basic little deal here to what I do to beans regulars I just took a pound of beans put them in there covered them with member not too much water onion bacon little jalapeno let them get to boiling I mean rolling then we're going to remember, pull them beans up when they're soft enough to skin tracks. Then we're going to season with some of that Red River Ranch original or mesquite. I love to do mesquite in these beans to put on them Indian tacos. Let them get good and tender. And then we're going to add some fried up hamburger meat. I use one pound of meat to this to mix in there. Let it go back to boiling again. Get all them flavors incorporated. These little rascals is done. And I'm talking golden brown. Don't be getting them too much. You can see that is just right. They still got a little texture to them, but I like that crisp right on the edge. Now, Slotted spoon, beans and hamburger meat. Lay them out there, make sure everybody gets some on there. As Justin Wilson would call them, onions and some tomatoes. A little fodder or some lettuce. And I got me some finely grated four blended up cheese there. And you can't never have too much cheese. It is ready to go. I like to pick this rascal up and just do this right here to it. <clears throat> Take me to the Ferris wheel and let me go around because I have went to the fair, folks. Now, a lot of people are going to try to eat these with a fork and a knife and cut them all up. If you fry them just to where they got a little t texture to them, you can bend them things over, pick them up. It's called a Happy Meal. You don't need no utensils. But the, the fry bread itself has got such a great traditional taste. And then 
You top that off with the beans and the hamburger meat that's been cooked together with some of our seasoning on there. And you know what I'm going to do, folks? You know what's coming, don't you? Raise a hand, anybody? You. Yeah. Red River Ranch Green Chili Chipotle Relish. I mean, it'll make you want to slap your mom upside the head and then run backwards because this stuff is good. So excuse me while I have another bite. You in for a special treat because we're going to give you a bonus. You take that little rascal right out of that hot grease, and if you want to, you can rub you some butter on there. I'm going to put me some cinnamon. Oh, and I'm going to put... Like a little salt? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very free cinnamon shaker. Then I'm going to take me some of this here powdered sugar, and if I was really artistic, I'd get me one of them sifters and bang on it like this right here, but I ain't artistic, so take you some of this here honey. Make you some little drizzlers all over there. Mm. <clears throat> Folks, I'll stand in line for this deal, but not for the Ferris wheel. This is some kind of that good. Folks, before we go on this great glorious day that we got some rainfall going, I gotta do some shout outs. We got this fella who lives in a place that I ain't been. It is Alex from Bavaria. That might be west of Fort Worth, I ain't for sure, but it is a long way from somewhere. And also another, and that is Lamar. Lamar been going through a bout with cancer, but he has got him a clean slate. So praise God and answered prayer, Lamar, we hope you're doing great, my friend. And we'll quit with this one. That is a father-daughter deal. It is Gary and his daughter, Caroline. Thank y'all so much for watching. We appreciate it as we do all of you. I want to tip my hat and a very special thank you to all the service men and women who are keeping that old flag, old Gloria, flying over my wagon. We appreciate you one and all. Now, I hope you get out there, find your local fair, or wherever you got to drive for your state fair, support that rascal. Hey, try out all their food, because they have got a bunch of it, and that's what it's for. As always, be sure and hit the subscribe button. God bless you, each and every one. And I don't know about y'all, but I ain't got to travel to go to the fair. See y'all down the trail. Greg, he's going to come out here in just a second. Oh, there he is! Hey. Hey, look here. Yeah. You look kind of rough, big. He says, for you folks that think I'm fat, I can still swim. <laughs>